This is the Dog Walk Chronicles. Um, what was today's first reading? If I gave it any thought, I wouldn't remember it. The Gospel, don't remember. It was Matthew and the first reading, I want to say Jeremiah. Oh, was the first reading was... Uh, the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first reading was a story about Joseph and how his brothers were jealous of him. And stop, stop. And his, they threw him down a pit and then they sold him into slavery. And you know what happens. A famine comes and Joseph ends up being the steward of the, uh, for the king of all the goods. And then in the uh, gospel, it's Matthew 21. For, uh, or chapter 23 or 21. Oh, the story about the king, the uh, vineyard owner who leases his land, uh, goes on a trip, comes back, wants the fruit, the money from his people. He sends stewards to collect. They beat them and kill them. He sends more. They beat them and kill them. And then he sends finally his son. He says, they'll listen to my son. Oh my gosh, that wasn't very smart. Anyway, they kill his son. So we know all, we can pretty much see the parallels between the vineyard owner and God and the son and Jesus. Um, what I wanted to talk about, though, was uh, there uh, there was some, some more tragedy in Gaza where civilians were trying to get to some, some uh, relief aid and either the IDF um, shot, I don't really know the details. I don't know what happened, but there was a stampede. I don't know if the shooting initiated the stampede or the stampede uh, then turned the shooting. But here's what I want to say. Hamas attacked. Hamas is in charge of Gaza. If I'm understanding this situation, at least from 2005, Israel got out of the area. They may be at the gates. They may be on the outside keeping uh, the Gazans in. But Hamas is the one who's in control. Hamas is the government in that area of the Gazans. So Hamas, which presumably they have a military force, sends this raid on October 7th kills, tortures, and kidnaps people. Then Israel, who has been attacked, goes to attack and kill their enemy, the military that has just come over and attacked them. So the choices are look when you got when a force as certainly as formidable as israel's force goes into an area whenever there's war civilians are liable to be are in the middle of it and liable to be casualties whenever there's a war uh if you're going to hide in cities and the army doesn't have an army base but it hides in cities and in tunnels and hides and tunnels themselves under the ground and in buildings, then invariably you're going to have to go through the civilians to get to the army. So Gaza knew what they were doing. The uh, Hamas knew what they were doing when they attacked. They knew Israel would come for them. Now you have choices. You either, just like in the world wars, you either surrender and help to mitigate and lessen the fatalities on your own people that you're supposedly governing for their own good, or you you fight through and try to win first off hamas is not going to win and they know that secondly they're not even trying to win they're just hiding so to end the whole thing is not israel's problem israel is going after the army that attacked them which is what every army and every country would do that has ever been attacked since the beginning of time well you have options either you just lick your wounds and say okay and take that that defeat or you go back and you you attack the army that attacked you 
And that's exactly what they're doing. And it's completely reasonable. So all these protests. The problem is Hamas either has to surrender or come out into the battle. But they're, they're not. They're just hiding behind civilian skirts. So um, the bottom line is Hamas could end this, the suffering for the people that they're supposedly governing, that the that the Gazan people voted them in. They voted Hamas in. How's that working out for you? It's not. So either you get rid of Hamas internally or you try to tell Hamas to surrender, which they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So uh, I think those are your, there's, there's your situation. Instead of complaining to Israel, who's doing what is completely normal and justified is going after an army that attacked them, a military and eradicating the military so that it can't come back and do it again. Like we probably should have done in World War II with Russia, but we didn't finish it. They should, they don't want to leave this undone just so that this can all happen over again. And, and let's face it, it will happen over again because even if you stop Hamas now, they will regroup, they will come back because as long as Israel is here, the Muslims are not going to be happy in the Middle East. They've kicked all the Christians out. They've, yeah, and almost all the Jews, except for this one area. They can't even leave them alone in that one area. So, yeah, Hamas, do the right thing for your people. And everyone recognize that the problem is Hamas who started this, Hamas who knew what they were doing, and Hamas who will not who will not surrender and is more than willing to let their people suffer at the expense at the rather than simply surrender which is what they need to do now or take it to the fight and 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 do, do it once and for all so let's uh, ask the saints to help <clears throat> let's ask the saints to pray for us particularly any saint Lots of popes and lots of uh, bishops went out against invading, uh, confronted invading Vandals and Goths and uh, the Huns and 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 worked for peace. Let's uh, ask all those saints who did those brave things. I forget who it was that turned back the Huns at one point. Uh, let's ask them to pray for us and let's continue to ask the, continue to pray for the souls in purgatory.